there was a large fire involving an energy storage system in the Netherlands, and fire crews were there for a significant amount of time. The fire occurred on December 26, 2023 at a company named Dens. It's a Dutch energy solutions company in the Netherlands. They make energy storage systems. They're large devices full of lithium ion batteries. And this one was 2.3 megawatt hours, a massive amount of power. If you look at an average extended range electric vehicle, it's right around 100 kilowatt hours. So this giant battery system will charge about 23 electric vehicles, unless you're talking about the electric Hummer. In that case, that vehicle is 212 kilowatt hours and you can charge about 11 of them. Now this container is fairly large, about half of a shipping container. It's eight foot by eight foot by 20 foot long. Lots and lots of power stored inside this steel container. Now when I researched this battery and the design of it, it seems a little concerning. It seems like the company doesn't understand the fundamental issues involving thermal runaway. Now they compartmentalize this battery and that is great. They separate off about 145 kilowatts at a time and they protect each one with its own fire suppression system. What they fail to realize is fire suppression isn't going to stop thermal runaway. Thermal runaway has two issues. Number one, when these batteries fail, they give off flammable gas. And when you've got that flammable gas building up in a compartment, that's not a good thing. That can lead to explosions. Ventilation is key in that regard because you want to ventilate that gas out of the structure. It's actually kind of interesting because if you look at Tesla Mega Packs, for example, they have igniters inside of their battery packs. That way, if they detect thermal runaway, they fire those igniters off, making sure they burn off the gases. The second part of thermal runaway that's a big issue is all the heat that's inside of there. Each cell gives off a tremendous amount of heat when they fail, and that heat will thermally damage its neighboring cells, causing them to fail. And you've got this cascading thermal runaway effect cell to cell to cell. And you really can't stop that. The best solution is to design these packs properly so you're isolating the cells, so you're directing the failure. Each cell has its own vent and you're directing all that heat, all that pressure, all those gases through a channel away from the other cells. Fire crews brought in a specialized container that's used to submerge electric vehicles that are on fire. And this one was designed specifically for large electric vehicles. My understanding is it was the only one they've got in the country. Personally, I'm not a big fan of submerging electric vehicles that are on fire. I think there's a lot of issues with this practice, and I talk about these issues in this video. The link should be right about here. But also, you look at things like the vehicles in Florida that were submerged, and once they come out of that water, they catch on fire. There's a lot of issues, again, submerging electric vehicles, and this tank specifically, it's not designed to fill that tank all the way to the top. Typically, when they use these types of containers, they only fill them up until the battery is submerged in the vehicle. They're not submerging the entire vehicle. And with an energy storage system, you really have to submerge the whole thing, and that's what they tried to do. Unfortunately, there was a catastrophic failure because these containers aren't necessarily designed to be filled all the way to the top with water. There's a lot of pressure working on the outer walls of this container. You, you can see the bulging on the side. You can see where it's split open from the rear, where that rear door opens. This container was not designed to be fully filled with water. Now, this fire went on for a number of hours. They were on scene for a significant amount of time, and basically they had to just allow this thing to burn itself out. Because number one, you have a really dangerous situation on your hands with all the explosive flammable gases building up inside the unit. But number two, it's very difficult to access the batteries inside of this unit. A lot of the newer energy storage systems, they're actually not designed this way anymore. They actually have access panels all around the outside of the structure. That way you don't have a single point of access. It's easier to open these containers up, ventilate them, and compartmentalize the batteries themselves. Energy storage systems are becoming very common right now. They're probably in your area and you don't even know it. And when it comes to building codes, when it comes to testing, a lot of this stuff is so new that building electrical codes, they're barely keeping up. A lot of them don't even mention these types of systems. The testing that's necessary to make sure these systems are safe, it's still unknown. They don't know what they don't know, so they can't test for what they don't know. 
And that's a problem. And there's going to be some growing pains as we start moving towards these types of systems being everywhere throughout the country, throughout the world. This isn't the first energy storage system that's caught on fire. It's not going to be the last. And if you want to learn about an incident that blew up a house in Germany, it had LFP batteries. It was a commercial system. Click this link right here.